Second Peter chapter one. Second Peter chapter one, reading from verse five. Second Peter one verse five. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith. There are some people that they don't add anything to their faith. I'm saved, I'm saved. Saved by grace through faith. And the Lord is saying, don't rest on that. Don't just stay in that. Move on. Add to your faith virtue. And to virtue, knowledge. Let that addition go on every day in your life. Get busy. And to knowledge, temperance. And to temperance, patience. And to patience, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, you are increasing the faith. You are developing the virtue. You are multiplying the knowledge. And you are getting more established in the temperance. And you are manifesting more patience today than you manifested before. You are no more in a hurry like you used to be in a hurry some years ago. And godliness is growing like a big tree, a great stable tree in your life. And brotherly kindness and charity love is growing in your life. It says, if that remains and abound, then they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather brethren, children of God, give diligence to make your calling and your election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. You will not fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're back now to John chapter 15. John chapter 15. Here is the Lord Jesus Christ talking to his disciples. The believers, beloved believers, they were. And he told them that if they were going to keep on bearing fruit and bringing glory to God and fulfilling the purpose for which they were called into the kingdom, they must abide in him, remain in him. Look at verse 6. If a man abide not in me. What you say, is that possible? If a man abides not in me, if somebody has been saved by Christ, can it, come, can it ever come to any time he doesn't remain, he doesn't abide in Christ? Oh yes, because he still has his free will. And God will not keep anyone against his will. God is not going to force anyone to remain. He wants us to remain. By the grace of God, we are going to remain. I said we are going to remain. But it is not by force. It is by love. He shows his love towards us. He reveals his grace to us. He answers our prayers. He does many good things for us that will kind of encourage us and influence us to want to stay. But we must understand, on the other hand, the devil wants to snatch everyone away. He also wants to have disciples following after him. And if you allow the devil to have the upper hand and a great influence upon you, you can use your free will and say, enough, I'm going. Enough, I'm leaving. Enough, I'm not abiding in him anymore. I pray you never come to that position. But there are people that come to that position. It will not be you. In chapter 15, verse 6, If a man abides not in me, is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burnt. Well, the disciples, uh, it, was, it was still fresh in their mind, one of them. There were 12 of them. And Judas Iscariot was one of the twelve. And Judas Iscariot decided that he loved money more than he loved Christ. He loved those 30 pieces of silver more than he loved Christ. And Jesus warned him. But that man did not abide. He did not stay. 
that was fresh in the minds of those disciples and they recollected that's what Jesus is saying if a man abide not in me if the pool of money if the pool of covetousness is so strong in the heart of anyone as to draw him away the consequence of that backsliding and abandoned fellowship will be very terrible and nothing was fresh in their mind in john chapter 6 john chapter 6 there were some people that came to the lord and when they came to the lord it was all you know joy and they were saying lord when did you go to that place we'll be seeking for you and then the lord began to teach them some important stuff brothers and sisters we cannot be on baby diet all our lives we cannot be on the feeding bottle all our lives the people have been on the feeding bottle on baby diet and now jesus began to give them some real kingdom knowledge and he began to tell them how they can form an intimate relationship with him to drink the blood of the son of man and eat the flesh of the son of man he was just making illustration that my word is flesh and bread indeed and you take my word into you and become strong that you must come to the point you are not on baby food you are not on by feeding bottle you're able to take strong meat now when he told them that, let's look at John, John chapter, chapter 6, verse 16. Many therefore of his, of his what? Disciples, when they had this, said, this is an hard saying. Who can hear it? There's some people, if you're still talking about salvation, they stay. Being born again, they stay. Healing, they will stay. Deliverance, they stay. When you're talking about the preliminary things and the superficial blessings, they will stay. When you're talking about success, about prosperity, about the blessing of God, about answers to prayer, they will stay. Talk about God giving the married man a good wife and giving that spinster a good husband and giving those that married couple children and think about a God giving us jobs and God protecting us, they will stay. When you now say, now today we're going to talk about holiness, we're going to talk about sanctification, we're going to talk about the death and the crucifixion of the Adamic nature. We're going to talk about the approaching of this sin so that our lives will bring glory to God and God alone. We're going to talk about endurance and staying till the end. And we're going to be like Job. Though he slay me, yet I will trust him. They say, what did I hear? Though he slay me, yet I will trust him. What am I hearing? That you must endure persecution and problem and pressure and still hold on and cleave on to the Lord till the end. I don't think I came for that. All I came for is the feeding bottle. I pray you'll go beyond the feeding bottle. you go beyond the baby diet. And you stop asking the Lord, oh Lord, why this and why this and why that. That's why some people fall off. That's why some people go away from the Lord. Look at verse 66. John chapter 6, verse 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back. I will not go back. I said, I will not go back. Many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. The reason why they went back is because he began to give them some hard stuff. And there's some people that are too much in a hurry. And they say, if God doesn't give me this in one month, I don't think I want to stay here. If God doesn't answer this prayer and give me this particular blessing in six months or in one year, then I'm through. I don't think I can stay. I cannot endure. But Jesus said, except to take up your cross and bear that cross and deny yourself and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. No, they didn't come for that. They cannot take that. They don't feed in bottle. You will get up of that feeling bottle. And you will be able to live a solid life. A stable life. A life that says rain or sunshine. In the day and in the night. Or the pressure or the pleasure. Whatever comes and whatever goes. The pain or the gain. 
I'm going to follow the Lord all throughout my life. It will be so for you in Jesus' name. We're looking at Second Timothy chapter 4. Second Timothy chapter 4. The people that just, they just fall off because of some challenges and difficulties they fall off. If a man abides not in me, is cast forth as a branch. And men gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burnt. It says in 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 10, For demons has forsaken me, having loved this present world. This present world. What did demons see in the present world? Who knows? The politics. Politics attracted him. And he said, I could, be, I could be this, I could be that. Other people will see chieftaincy title. If I will go back to my local government and go back to my state, I think uh, those people, because all the people that have been contesting, people don't like them. They are not voting for them. I think I can make it. And that the pool of politics will draw them away. Other people is, uh, you know, the offer of a greater job. The job is going to take them to a place where they will not hear the word of God. Where they will not have the fellowship of the children of God. And then they say, I'm sorry, I just have to leave. I've been looking for a job for a long time and this offer has now come and even apart from salary there's a vehicle there's a house there's a driver everything is just made my friend what shall he profit a man if he gained the whole world and he loses his soul what will you give in exchange for your soul there are some people that is what pulls them away other people is the merriment and the ceremonies of this world Maybe, for example, you come, they're having a wedding here, and we're having one, uh, you know, next Saturday, and I hope you'll come and, you know, just, just rejoice with the people are rejoicing. And then they see everything moderate. They go to the reception, everything is moderate. Or they say, so when it comes to my turn, it's how everything will be. I want the whole earth to hear. And for people to come from America and from Britain, from everywhere, and then they will know that so and so is getting married. And because they feel I may not have that here, I don't think I will stay. The world pulls them away. I pray the world will not pull you away. Uh, you know, some people, is, you know, some of these little, little things, the things we should not even be mentioning, either the thing they rub on the face, or the one they put in the ear, or the one they hang on the neck, and because of that, they say, I love my little things so much, I don't think I want to stay with Christ. You should outgrow that, all those toys of the world. All those things that glitter and they are not gold. All those things that are not essential. They are not essential parts of life. We can forgo all that and not be like demons that love this present world. And then forsook Christ and forsook the people of God. You will not forsake God. I said you will not forsake God. You were looking at Mark chapter 4. The things that draw people's hearts away. And then it's like a branch that will not abide. A branch that will not remain. A branch that will not stay in the experience of salvation which they have got. Mark chapter 4. And I'm reading to you from verse 19. And the cares of this world. And the deceitfulness of riches. And the lust of all the things entering in choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. The desires, the cares of this world, the cares of this world. What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What work are we going to do? Are we going to have promotion? That's why some people don't attend Bible study because they want to work over time every time. I want to have land and build a house. I want to have this. I want to have that. My mates, my age mates are having this. They're having that. When will, when will it come to my turn? And because of that, they abandon the knowledge of God, the study of the word. They abandon commitment. That's why some people have been in this church for five years, seven years, ten years. They have the knowledge of that the rest of us have. But they cannot work for the Lord. They cannot lead us flesh. They can as for ability. They cannot because of availability. They are not available. They cannot work for the Lord. And a lot of things to do in the kingdom of God to show that you are totally intimately associated, attached to the body of Christ. But you don't have time. You have time, but you're giving the time to making money. 
getting promotion on the job, having this and that is the care of the world in verse 19. And the deceitfulness of riches, it looks like I need to pile it up. I need to stack it up. I need to have more, have more, have more. And in the B, to have more. You want to be a millionaire. You want to be a billionaire. And you don't want to be rich in the things of the spirit. That's why some people fall away. And the lost of all the things entering in choke the word. And it becometh unfruitful. And the Lord said, if a man abide not in me is cast forth as a branch i pray god will not cast you away you will remain with the lord you will not go away from the lord give me a good amen yeah. the second peter chapter two second peter chapter two i'm reading there from verse 20 for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the lord and savior jesus christ who are those people who have escaped the corruption of the world? Those are the people who are saved. Those are born again people. Those are the brethren, your brethren, my brethren, our brethren. They have escaped the pollutions of the world. How did they escape that? Not by personal struggling, not by personal self-effort, by grace, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They were cleansed. They were washed and they came into the kingdom. They became believers. And then if after that, look at verse 20, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse for them than the beginning. The latter end is worse for them than the beginning. How do you understand that? What the Lord is saying is this. Let's say somebody never knew the Lord. He was an unbeliever. And he didn't hear the gospel. Or he had the gospel. He never yielded to the gospel. He was never saved. He was not born again. He did not escape the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Unsaved, sinner, total sinner, never in Christ. He dies. He will go to hell. When he goes to hell, let's say as the, there are degrees of hotness in hell, there are degrees of punishment in hell, there are degrees of suffering, pain in hell. And now let's say that he has 60 degrees heat of hell. It was never said. 60 degrees of hell fire heat. Now we take another person, he was born again. He was associated to the Lord. He was a branch in the vine. But because of money, because of lust, because of the flesh, because of wanting to furnish, supply the pleasure of the flesh illegally, unscripturally, he went into sin. And the Spirit of God kept on saying, you can come back, you can repent. He says, no, the pleasure of the flesh is too much for me. I cannot live that. If he dies in that condition, having gone away from the Lord, he will go to hell. Remember now, he was saved before. The one that was not saved before, 